Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm the GQ Jedi. If you're not already subscribed, then go ahead and blast the subscribe button down below and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Now today I've got an exciting video for you. Today we're going to be exploring Kenner's 1980 Hoth Ice Planet Adventure playset. Wait, 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 just wait a second. Why am I showing you photos off the internet? You don't want to see that. Don't you want to see the actual toy? I have it. Let's take a look. With the release of The Empire Strikes Back in theaters, the demand for toys was at an unparalleled galactic high and Kenner knew it. They desperately needed to get a play set out to stores because kids wanted to go home and recreate the Battle of Hoth. Make no mistake here, Kenner's ingenuity would strike back because it was far easier and cheaper to recycle an old idea than to come up with a new concept, something that Kenner was notorious for. Now that's not to say that Kenner didn't make some of the coolest playsets ever, because if they didn't, I wouldn't be making this video. It's just that they had far more toys to create for The Empire Strikes Back than they did for the original Star Wars film. More worlds, more characters, which meant more plastic. Kenner had to get busy and get busy fast, so they dusted off an old idea from the A New Hope line. Using the 1979 Land of the Jawas playset. That's right. Does that look familiar? It should because it's the exact same base. Kenner used the same mold and just swapped out the colors of the dusty, sandy dunes of Tatooine for the snow-covered tundras of Hoth. A tactic Kenner would employ once more with the 1981 Rebel Command Center. That is recycling at its absolute finest. The Hoth Ice Planet Adventure set as it was called still utilized the old school foot pegs. So you could still pop up five, six guys on your base with no problems. Also, the action lever was still present, obviously, because it is the same base as the Jawa. Turning that, and this little action plate pops up, and if you put a guy here, you can go a little flying action, but as soon as hell, this is all a bunch of bad guys. I don't think Vader's going to take a swipe at one of his snowtroopers. Now, the back side here, you'll notice that there's already two slots, which kind of seems like Kenner had no choice in you know, how they're using the exact same base as the land of the Jawas, so it only made sense that they would use a cardboard backdrop. And if you turn it around, you'll notice on the back side that each piece is already kind of pre-cut and you had to assemble it. It's really easy. Um, although this cardboard is a little flimsy, so you got to be careful. I'm doing my absolute best not to monkey with it. Um, and then you'll notice the little foot pegs. Four of them if you want to stick guys in there, which I never did, but it is an option. Another cool action feature of the Hoth Ice Planet Adventure set was the working elevator. Kids were able to stick one figure at a time onto the elevator and using an action lever, hoist the figure up into the belly of the beast, which I just showed you the backside of. Unfortunately for me, I never felt like the elevator worked properly. It felt like the action lever always got stuck and the elevator would just get, well, like elevators sometimes tend to do, they get stuck. Thus, my guy just hanging out there in the mid limbo. Not really something I need in the middle of a battle. But I still honestly think it's a cool feature and it's definitely a recycled feature from, you know, you guessed it, the land of the Jawas. The AT-AT was surrounded by snow speeders in various forms of flight. Some were attacking, some were crashing. But make no mistake, that artwork from 1980 is simply gorgeous. Now the last feature that I haven't mentioned yet is the radar laser cannon. Now if you're all familiar with the Battle of Hoth, you know dang Skippy that that is not an Imperial manufactured cannon. That belongs to the Rebels. So in essence, you really could stack the deck. The Imperials can have the walker, and you could populate this entire base with rebels and they could be handling business. But that's up to you. If you guys caught my snow speeder video, if you haven't, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. 
The box art for this play set is pretty rad. Those colors are super vibrant with a lot of detail. And if you'll notice, the kid in the left corner, he's gone. Or at least his face is. Sorry, Mom. Well, he's not entirely gone. He's got his arm there, but that's still an upgrade. Something that I think Kenner got away from when they realized that kids don't need to look at a kid to sell them a Star Wars toy. Star Wars toys will sell themselves. The last thing I want to talk about is the box itself, not specifically the art, but the structure. When I first got this toy, it wasn't as, uh, uh, well, it didn't have as much structure to it. These flaps, if you can see, they were they're a lot more straight now than they were when I first got it. Um, they got a lot of, these things tend to bend and warp. Um, the creasing, the veins that you'll get, that's not, that's not fixable. But the, the box, you can actually use a hot iron. And what I do recommend is putting a piece of fabric or cloth underneath it between the iron and the uh, piece of cardboard itself, putting something in between. Um, with a little bit of pressure and just a little bit of heat and some patience, you can slowly work the warped curvature of the box flaps back out. You can actually flatten them out a little bit more, which is what I've done uh, to the best of my ability. Now you can't apply too much pressure and you can't leave the heat on it for too long because you will damage the box. But um, the overall effect uh, is uh, desired. I mean, you, you, you will get, with a little bit of time, you will, you will be able to flatten it out. Because when I first got this box, these flaps were like, they were super, it was like Dooku's lightsaber. There was a curve there. And now, not so much. Um, it's a lot, uh, a lot straighter, straighter than it used to be. And of course, fits into the box easier when it's not so damaged. And so when you put it on a wall or you, you know, wherever it is you're gonna display, at least you have something of a box shape again. Something like that. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it's still worth a shot. I do recommend it. The Hoth Ice Planet Adventure set was one of four play sets created for the Hoth Empire Strikes Back toy line. And for all its simplicity, it's still a really cool play set. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope you learned a little something about the 1980 Hoth Ice Planet Adventure set. And if you did like the video, go ahead and give the like button a thumbs up because it would really help the channel. And if you're not already doing so, please blast that subscribe button and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And I'd really like to know, did you like this playset? Did you have this playset as a kid? Or did you tell mom not to buy it for you because it was cardboard, a little too cheesy? There's other plastic playsets that you'd rather have? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And remember... Collect or collect not, there is no try.